Tonight, President Trump continues his bullet a China shop routine, picking a pair of new fights he's not likely to win, threatening a government shutdown if Congress won't pay for his wall, and moving to deport hundreds of thousands of done undocumented immigrants who came here as children, dreamers. All this as yet another close aid goes public with his criticism of number 45. Then, for all the, all the talk of how divided Republicans are in Washington, in Albany, it's Democrat versus Democrat. And no one's pulling punches in the talks to try and reunify them. We're going to hear from a key player in that fight, a Democratic State Senate leader, Andrea Stewart-Cousins. And in just a few hours, you can drive across the newest landmark in New York. The Mario Cuomo Bridge, set to open to traffic, will help you plan the drive. Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. A little bit of this and that. Tonight we'll talk about that, the big storm coming down. Also look back at the eclipse and also we will go out to Las Vegas where our own reporters on the scene here with a look at the latest of the fight of the century. Okay, first though, another day, another set of fights being picked by the 45th president of the United States. President Trump, this time threatening lawmakers from his own party, not to mention the nation as a whole. He's threatened he's going to shut the whole government down unless Congress agrees to pay for the wall he originally told all of us Mexico would be footing the bill. And as he links the stability of the government to immigration, he's also targeting a new group of immigrants. They're called dreamers. These are people who came here as children, legally, illegally at the time, but they were promised by the past administration they were safe. Well, in a crackdown, the president originally said it wouldn't happen, but now... This looks far more likely he may send them home. The move the president is considering would put nearly 800,000 undocumented immigrants in danger of being deported. They are known as dreamers, people who came into the United States illegally as children. President Obama gave them legal status and back in January, President Trump told ABC they had little to fear. They shouldn't be very worried. They are here illegally. They shouldn't be very worried. I do have a big heart. But now, several conservative states, led by Texas, they're threatening to sue to end the program. And White House officials say the president is seriously considering giving in rather than defending the program in court. The move, it comes as President Trump, is threatening a government shutdown that unless Congress provides funds to pay for his wall in the Mexican border. During the campaign, of course, Trump promised that Mexico would pay for the wall. And I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Who's going to pay for the wall? Mexico! 100%. So why is he now threatening a government shutdown if Congress won't pay for it? The, the president's committed to making sure this gets done. Again, he said over and over again, he talked about the campaign over and over again, he said Mexico's going to pay for the wall. Now, once again, the president's committed to making sure this happens and we're going to push forward. SNL's Weekend Update ridiculed the president's new hard line on Congress footing the bill. What do we want? The wall! And who's going to pay for it? Mexico! That's right, you are the American taxpayer. <laughs> the president appears to be gearing up for a fight with the Republican leaders on Thursday blasting Senate leader Mitch McConnell over the Senate's failure to repeal Obamacare, tweeting, he failed. That should never have happened. He also took aim at both McConnell and House Speaker Paul Ryan over the looming budget battle, calling it a mess. For more, let's bring in our political panel. You know the guys, Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. All right, never a dull day, guys. Okay, the shutdown. This one, even by Trumpian standards, to me, inexplicable, in that... Again, we played the clip. This is easy to understand. This is not policy wonk inside baseball. He said, the wall, Mexico's paying for it here. Read my lips. You know, it was that moment everybody knew. SNL, I think, it was like shooting fish in a barrel, an easy clip. He's going to turn around and extort Congress to say, you don't give me my wall that the public now is going to pay for. I'm going to shut the whole government down. And oh, by the way, we, meaning the Republican Party and his administration, by every historical standard, would be the biggest losers in addition to the American public if he actually followed through. There's on. actually another layer to it beyond that. I, I, I think going back to the last 30 or 35 years, I think there's been one shutdown where it was Congress and the president of the same party. I want to say it was like for three days under Carter, but I, I could be wrong. Don't quote me. Uh, but 
you know, just think back to the, to the uh, shutdown during the Obama administration. It was a Republican Congress, and the, pro the Democratic president couldn't get on the same page. What a disaster it would be, not just for the president, but for the entire Republican Party, if this Republican versus Republican problem leads to the shutdown of the government and all of the problems that goes with that. And then on top of that, there's the, the dreamers who, well, we'll get to the dreamers yeah, in just but, a second, but, but the wall, the, the payment of the wall is so clear for people to understand. His supporters don't care. They'll say he was just speaking in metaphors. All he wanted to do was border protection. But those, those Obama-Trump voters, the voters who flipped to go for Trump, they're going to think they were sold a bill of goods in this election. And, um, every time we talk shutdown, we know what happens. Two weeks before the stories start coming out about what it would look like, seniors don't get their Social Security stack checks. Millions of people now all of a sudden don't get to work. And all of a sudden, things that the government does that I know people say they don't do anything, all of a sudden people realize those services are gone mm -hmm. now too. And then people always ask, why? What are we doing this for? In the past, at least, it was this BS, but still this idea of fiscal discipline and all the rest. This time, you have McConnell, you have Ryan already saying, we're not shutting the government down. So now it's clear. Republican leadership saying it's not going to happen. The president saying he's going to do it, and he's going to do it over another campaign lie. And Democrats, all they have to do is shut up. I cannot remember on this kind of a thing, a more self-inflicted, slow-moving crisis <laughs> that one political party that's in the minority, to Andrew's point, doesn't have to do anything. And again, for people who think it's inside baseball, trust me, this always is an easy issue to understand by the time you get to the clock striking 12, Dominic. This will be disastrous for Republicans, especially with the midterms now all of a sudden within, you know, eyesight. Richard, there's no way, you, you did an excellent job of setting this up because it is, an, and Andrew did as well, it is an absolute disaster from one Republican to the other. It Over is nuts. Wall. It is nuts. It's absolutely nuts. Plus also, he's extorting. I'm not exaggerating. Right. Literally. He's literally blackmailing the country that because he couldn't deliver on what he promised. Right, on what he promised. Right. <laughs> and everybody said it's not going to happen. He said, oh, no, it's going to happen. Because he couldn't do it, he's going to extort and hold the country hostage and shoot his own party if he doesn't get what he wants, and it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Uh, Republican leaders are actively rebelling. I think, Richard, we're going to be headed towards a situation. Remember what, two weeks ago when all the generals got together and the president said this as it relates to uh, uh, transsexual, transgender, yeah. transgender, and, they transgender. Yeah. and they were like, whatever, that's what's happening now. That's literally what's happening now. And by the way, the Wall Street Journals and the rest, they're already starting to talk about skittish markets. For the first time, it's been bulletproof, the stock market. It has nothing to do. Mm -hmm. not, this is not because I like, don't like. The success in terms of the jobs numbers and also the stock market has nothing to do with anything this administration is doing or not doing. Moreover, the first thing that will directly impact it, barring a crisis, will be a shutdown. Now, before we run out of time on this, the dreamers, again, Forget, you know, I can talk about policy and numbers and how immigration actually helps country and all the rest. You don't have to do that. The dreamers, let's define who we're talking about. We're talking about kids, sometimes infants who come to this country, the only country they know. The president, the former president, made a promise that they're safe because mm -hmm. they came here against their will. They had no voice in the they subject. No they don't even speak the language of the nation they came from in many cases. And the president, our current president, Andrew, promised him he wouldn't send him back home. And now, all of a sudden, either he doesn't have the political will to fight back against states that are like Texas that are considering to do it, or he just doesn't care. Look, this is this when you when you're talking about dreamers and the dream, this, this is different than the rest of the debate over illegal immigration, because there's a, a healthy split in this country as to people who who feel undocumented immigrants should be penalized because they broke the law when they came here in the first place. It's a debate we've had on the show. It's a debate that will continue. And that, the country's relatively split on that. But because these are the kids who had no choice, and it's, you know, and because the, the number of stories that you hear about people who dragged their kids here specifically to become anchor, there are so few of those, and they're so far between. It's so patently unfair. And the human faces that will be put on those stories, and let me it's just absolutely that point unbelievable. That made. You're going to have valedictorians of high schools, you're going to have guys serving in the military yes. 
their faces, this is how TV works, okay? You're gonna see their profiles, literally. Somebody getting pulled out of armed service, somebody who served in Iraq or Afghanistan or whatever else. And now they're gonna be shipped back home from a guy who took to firmness not to do it. And you're gonna have a kid with a tassel and you know, the, the motorboard with a hat here at graduation, top of his class who doesn't even speak the language, sent back to Guadalajara and to a, obviously an unsafe environment. Those are the stories you're gonna hear. All right, meanwhile, word of yet another key Trump advisor upset with his boss in deciding shockingly to air it publicly like so many others in the administration and on Capitol Hill. This all stems from Charlottesville and the president's placement of neo-Nazis and white supremacists on the same moral plane as those who turned out to protest them. It's been an especially tense period for Trump's closest Jewish advisors, two of whom, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin and top economic advisor Gary Cohn, were standing next to the president when he gave that off-the-rails press conference at Trump Tower. Well, now... Cohn is speaking out. He told the Financial Times, quote, it's amazing, this is his own words here, citizens standing up for equality and freedom can never be equated with white supremacists, neo-Nazis, and the KKK. I believe this administration can and must do better in consistently and unequivocally condemning those groups and do everything we can do to heal the deep divisions that exist in our communities. But he added, he is not leaving the president's side. Quote, as a Jewish American, he went on, I will not allow neo-Nazis ranting Jews will not replace us to cause this Jew to leave his job. Times adding to that reporting that Cohn not only was considering submitting his resignation, he went so far as to draft a resignation letter, but he never delivered it. One reason? Cohn is in consideration to become the next Fed chairman if the president decides to replace Janet Yellen. Okay, Dom, you give him points here for going public, um, with his concerns, or you might have wrote the thing, but you didn't hand it in. Does he get does he get a pass at least that he stood up and said something, or it seems and rings a little shallow because he's gotten criticism today. There's one thing to threaten to quit, and there's another thing to walk out the door. I give him credit for standing up because let's be honest, knowing this president in a public way, the way that all of us do, his days are numbered in this administration. So whether he leaves on his own Isn't or whether he running not out of folks. Uh, yeah, the president is running out of folks. That's a good point. Um, but I, I give him credit because to, to go forward in the way that he did, he's risking his entire political career with this administration, and it takes, it takes a, a, a strong person. It maybe, maybe it took him a day or so later, but he still stood up, and you know this president is never going to accept the fact that he went public with his criticism. But Andrew, and again, I'm, I'm personalizing this to a degree, when he goes to the synagogue, or for that matter, Mnuchin, mm -hmm. or for that matter, Jared Kushner. Mm -hmm. And they look around, and people are looking at him and saying, your boss, who you're working for, who you're choosing to work for, basically said that the KKK, there's some good people there. He still has to look him in the eye and say, it's different, which it's is, not the same. the statement, but ask me the question that you asked Dominic. Do you give him a pass? No, and here's why. Because throughout Jewish history, going from enslavement in Egypt to the Spanish Inquisition to Nazi Germany, when Jews have been targeted throughout history, there have always been Jews who worked with their oppressors. There have always been, there were Jews who worked with the Nazis. They were, you know, they, they ran the ghettos in, in Warsaw and in other cities. Uh, same in the Inquisition, same in Egypt. And those people assisted in the slaughter of millions of Jews. I mean, they, they played a role. They, they didn't do it, they didn't stop it, and, they, they, assist, and they, they abetted the process. And ever since, you know, especially since the, the Holocaust, there has been a, an organization and a movement among Jews to make sure that that never happens again. Not only that the incidents never happen again, but that we do not assist in the process. And let's be honest, that's what Mnuchin and Cohn and Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump are doing at this point. They're assisting this guy in helping to raise the level of anti-Semitic tension in this country, not to mention racist tension in this country. So, you know, he did the least possible thing that he needed to do. He got some of the heat off of him from his friends and from his family and from the people he's going to wind up in synagogue if he goes to a synagogue. And I'm not, I, I don't go that often either. So, but 
you know, if it's because he doesn't want to lose his place by Trump's side or because he wants to be the next Fed chairman, that is putting such a selfish interest ahead of the, the interest of the nation and his people. It's easy for me to say I agree, but the same concerns people say about the generals, which is if he continues to flaunt discipline, authority, checks and balances, protocol, why not walk? And the argument to them is, if they walk, what fills the vacuum? There are Who moral, prevents him from put, putting his finger on the button? There are moral absolutes in this world, Rich, and this is one of them. All right, interesting conversation. All right, guys, coming up next, it is a rare week that both begins and ends with extraordinary meteorological events. But this week, we got both. It began with an awe-inspiring total solar eclipse and is ending with a terrifying hurricane bearing down on the Gulf. We're gonna go in-depth on both straight ahead.